Greetings, everyone. Reed here. Today, we have a nice selection of junk. Well, it's not junk. There's a purpose to it. Like all my stuff, there's always a purpose. Today, we are going to be working on solar combiner boxes. This one is from Midnight Solar. And this is what the inside looks like. Breakers here. And I can get my fingers on it. Here we go. All right. Now, and then these cables here plug on to solar panels. Like this one standing next to me. Now, you use this where your solar panels are. So it turns off the individual strings of solar panels. Don't stress too much about that. But you need this. Why? It's really handy to be able to turn these things off and not have live wires to work on. I appreciate safety. And it's actually required by the National Electric Code if you actually are doing any of this where it's ever gonna get inspected. Plus, it's a very important safety feature. I highly recommend you use one, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to put one together from start to finish, because I gotta make another one of these for one of my other strings of panels I'm trying to wire up and get more things working around here. Don't worry, you'll get to see all of that as well. well let's get started here. All right, here's the brand new one I got in the box. We're gonna unbox it. Ooh, an unboxing video. Crazy. Well, let's see here. And yes, they apparently really glue this shut. There we go. Okay. Oh, we have instructions, which are handy. <laughs> and it's a pretty good fit. And here's this part. And let's. Oh, it's screwed shut. Let's undo the screw. Ooh, we have a warning label. Oh, no, instruction label. So there you go. Now, to get this to open, what you do is you put a screwdriver here on the side, just kind of push. And it just kind of pops the lid off. Yeah, works pretty well. And then this just comes out. And then here's the various pieces we're going to be using. And the, the death warning sticker. Very valuable. I like to put them on all sorts of things, you know. I put it on my food supply at work so people know, don't touch it. All right, now this is going to contain the adapter and then the back plate, or I mean the bus bar. And so here's the bus bar. You can see there's one side with three and then another side with these closer three. And what it is is you can actually adapt this to use 1000 volt fuses if you're doing very high voltage. We're not going to be running that high. My stuff's going to be about 105 volts from the solar panels out, which works really well. If you're going a very long distance, yeah, you pump up the voltage real far and it's like there was no other way to do it, yeah. Um, I'm just not that keen on messing with super high voltages unless I have to deal with it. So there you go. Uh, so if I don't use this, I save it just in case I ever have to deal with it, but don't have to worry about it right now. And here is the output combiner. So the three breakers feed into these, then it comes and it goes to a single wire and this lug attaches there to run the single wire out. Hope that makes that sense. If not, don't worry. We're just gonna wire things up today. Now, these do come in different sizes. So like here is one that holds up to six and it's got it wired for five. Now, why would you need three versus five versus 12 or something like that? Well, as I said, these are strings of panels. So this is where you combine it together in parallel and the strings are the series com combination. If you don't get that, don't worry. When we go to wire up more stuff later, it will finally make sense. But for now, just know that there's different sizes of them. We'll put this one away. Now, in addition to what came in the box from Midnight Solar, we also need some additional supplies. We need a breaker, and you have to pick these specific to your solar panels. All right, but don't worry about that. We'll go over that eventually. But for now, just know I got the right breakers for the solar panels I'm gonna be wiring up. We need wire. This wire is USE-2 rated jacket insulation. That's the stuff around the wire that protects it. 
and it's acceptable for use with solar panels. Another thing that's also acceptable for solar panels is called PV wire, all right? Now, the reason why you have a limitation on what kind of wire you can use on solar panels is because it gets really hot. They also want something that won't degrade under UV conditions and exposure to the sunlight. So with that in mind, they approved two different types of wire, USE-2 and PV wire. Now, PV wire is slightly different than USE-2, and there's some different things, but for now, this is what I have, and this is what I'm going to use, USE-2, okay? And one of the other things we do need, these things. These are ends that I'm going to crimp onto the end of the wire to plug onto the solar panel. It's right here. Now, the solar panel has these nice ends here. This one actually has a marker here that says plus. This one over here says minus. That's real handy. Now, say you have a solar panel that's unmarked, and you're like, hmm, which end is plus and minus? Well, it's real easy. So lay your solar panel out here, expose it to the sun, get yourself a multimeter, turn it on to DC voltage, okay? And then what you do is you put one end in the connector, one end in the other connector, and you look to see what voltage it produces. Now, if the multimeter says there's a minus in front of it, well, you flip it around. And you're like, oh, is this minus or positive? Hey, once you've got a positive number of the multimeters displaying, then you know that the end, the red one was in, is the positive one. And then you know the other end is the negative. Good way to double check. Now, there is a standard. They're supposed to be wired this way. Positive end is uh, the male end, and the female end is supposed to be the minus. Not all panels follow that standard. Or you've also seen some people put their own stuff together. I always say double check until you know what you're dealing with. Okay, so let's set that aside and get started on actually crimping some wires. And we're back everyone. And if you're wondering why things look a little different is because I had to reset the camera, get everything back. And I took the best guess I had because the wind apparently decided to go and my camera just took off. So you can see at the end where the camera goes and see, sees the sky or whatever. <laughs> we'll see what that looks like at the very end. Anyways, back to our project. All right, I cut six pieces of wire. Three of the red, three of the white. Now the white is the negative, meaning neutral, because I bond my negative to ground, making it neutral. All right, and then the red is gonna be the hot, in this case, the positive. Now, these wires are about three feet long, okay? And that's pretty much what I need. Now, if you're wondering, Reed, you pre-cut that. What if when you're hooking it up, you find out you're too short? Uh, I'll make an extension cable. Uh, that's why I have these ends. They you know, easy to make an extension cable. And this is 10 gauge wire. I'm using 10 gauge because even though the amperage is way over the amp requirements, I wanted to maximize the energy harvest. So in other words, the amount of energy lost in the wire transmission. Because I'm doing short distance and all that and 10 gauge and the voltage, yeah, I'm gonna have very, very efficient wire going in. So look at that, yeah, it's good. We will cover exactly how wire loss and all this stuff works later, don't worry. But for my application, 10 gauge, good fit. Now we just got to put some ends and everything else and get get going. Now I've stripped off the ends here, so I got wire exposed. And you need about half inch, a little less is okay, but about a half inch. Now what you want, and so these are the conductor pieces that are going to get crimped on here. So they go on here, and you want to make certain the wire can butt right up against here, the insulation, and that you're not hitting the end or some other stuff like that, that it's a good fit. Okay, now there's two types of these silver pieces. So one looks like this, and then the other is like this, and they go in together like that. Now this goes into the male, and this goes into the female. They're very easy to get wrong. I have accidentally put one into the one end versus the other, and the connector's wrong, and you have to cut it off and start again, because these things don't come back out when you put them in. The solar connectors are very reliable, and they don't come apart. <laughs> so be careful. This big hole goes in the male. This narrow one goes in the female, okay? Now the male is this end, okay? So I like to just pair them together. So I take all the big ends and the males, put them in one hand, and then set them off to the side. Take the females and pair them up with their connectors. I'm trying hard not to ruin a connector and have to do it twice. You know, and sort of this sort of separation, you know, prevents as you're working on doing stuff from going, crap, 
I got to redo that. <laughs> and I'm certain anyone out there who's done projects, you all have run into that thing going, shoot, this ain't right. <laughs> now, like I said, over on the solar panel, the male is the positive, but we're mating to that, right? So on our wires, the positive wire gets the female end. Yes, it's inverted. So you got to be aware of that. Positive to positive, meaning where you have two male connectors, if you wire up the male on the positive of your end, uh, doesn't work. And yes, I have accidentally been in the train of thought, oh yeah, let me just wire this like, duh, 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 duh. and then you try to put them together. Female to female don't connect, and male to male don't connect. Nope, don't work. So, on the wire ends of our combiner box, we put the female end on the positive wire. So these go on the red wires. And let's put that there. Okay. So here's our wire. And what we do is we'll unscrew this. And to get this right, we're going to put the cap. And then we're going to put this guy. Okay. So it goes on like this. So the blue little insulation is facing towards this end because it butts up here to waterproof this connector. So I like to pre-stage these so I don't forget. There's another one correct. Okay. And then, yeah, all correct. And you want to double check them because I've gotten packages from the factory where it's reversed inside here for whatever reason. Okay. Now, what I'm going to use here is some goop. This is anti-oxidizing compound. I'm going to put this on the wire and then crimp the connectors on here. Now, this stuff isn't a hard requirement, but this stuff's out in the you know weather. It's exposed to moisture and other stuff like that. It's insurance. It prevents moisture from getting in there and turning my copper wires, you know, that wonderful, nice, lovely green color, meaning there's oxidation everywhere. And that makes the connectors work less and less efficiently and eventually corrode and come apart and break. So if you have any reason that moisture is getting in there accidentally, because there could be a nick in your thing, an insulation's got nick and stuff like that, this is good insurance. It also has fine zinc particles in there. And this stuff will make certain it gets a real good grip between the connector and the wire and the fine zinc particles conduct electricity very well. So anything that's outside, all right, even though it's not a hard requirement to use it on copper wires, I put it on my copper wires. I put it in the breakers when I'm connecting the copper wires and that's like that. Because I want these connections to last, well, for 30 to 40 years at least. So I like this little insurance. Feel free to not use it, but I encourage you to use it. And if you're wondering where to get it, links in the description. In fact, links to everything is in the description if you want to get some of this stuff and all the things I'm using. And I get nothing from it. I don't have an affiliate store. I'm a completely random dude out here doing stuff that makes no money. And I'm just doing this, for, I guess, for my own fun. YouTube's fun, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so we're going to put this in the connectors and crimp them. Now I've got my wire here gooped. You can see the gray on it and stuff. And... It's gonna go on here and just crimp away. Now we're gonna get this lined up where I want it, put the wire in, and there we go. Now the slots, you're gonna use a crimper on this, okay? So this is 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge. 14 gauge is on the farthest on the outside. Now the connectors themselves can use 12, I mean a 14 to 10 gauge wire, but you have to put it in the right slot so it gets the right pressure on the connector to make certain you got a really good crimp, okay? So just get in the right spot. All right, so then we put it in here and we squeeze all the way down. Let go, it's grabbed it. There we go. And it is on here really well. These things make great connections and lifetime really. That's why we use MC4 connectors, very good connectors. We take our Dewicky we put it in here, you hear a little click. Good, it's locked in there. And we just gotta put this up to here and put this together. Now, one of the other things in the assembly tools is these guys, okay? I'll put a link to these in the description, so check the descriptions. You just put this on here, you get the other one, put it, wrap it around, and you just twist. Now, it's kinda neat. 
Not this. You just keep twisting. Keep twisting. You, it just it slips when it's at the right tightness. It's got like a release. So that's what you do. And we just repeat that and we'll get all the ends done. And through the magic of editing, we have three positive ends for the solar combiner wired up and done. Okay, now let's do the negative wires. So we'll grab the pieces we set aside to prevent us from being idiots and crimping the wrong end to the wrong place. And then later going, ah! And Lee can attest to you. She's heard me yell and swear like a sailor plenty of times when I suddenly discover the wrong thing is there. Right, Lee? Yep. All right. And we're going to do the same process. Get our wire, put some goop on it. Put it in our crimper. Oh, you guys realize I skipped a step? What did we forget to do? We forgot to put the jackets and the screw pieces on the wires because we were doing this when the other side was connected. We'd really be out of luck. Let's fix that. Make certain they're all correct too. There we go. There, yep. All right, now let's get this crimped. Now, just like the other wire, it gets on there, forms a real good connection. We'll tug on it. Yep, very nice. Take the end and then push it on, clicks. Then we just gotta screw things together. Use our tool. And we rotate till it doesn't rotate anymore. There we go. All done. Spiffy. Let's get the other wires. Wow! Look at that. Suddenly all the wires are done and ready to be hooked up further. Crazy. Movie magic, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so we got all these done. Now, at this point, we'd like to do something called a sanity check. Reed, what do you mean a sanity check? Well, I gotta check to make certain I'm ins not insane. Or maybe I am insane. Well, something like that. Now, what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna try plugging the positive wire into the positive end on the solar panel and the negative wire into the negative end on the solar panel. Make certain we don't have something wrong. Cause wrong is bad. It suddenly causes you to scream, pull your hair out, dissolve into a massive cursing fit. Have the cops called on you, end up in jail, that sort of thing. Wrong is bad. Avoid wrong. So let's check now before we get much further and really start cursing. All right, here is the negative. So let's grab a negative end. Ooh, they, they look all right, all right? Does it go? Hey, it does connect. All right, positive. Positive wire. Let's see, does it go? Yep. Okay. Now, I haven't pushed it in as far enough to make it click because I don't really want to have to do the disassembly, but they're mating, and that's good. 
You know, not making kids mating, but mating together and forming connections, which is a good thing. Now here's our empty combiner box. We gotta make the wires go in. We're gonna pop out this one, this one, and this one, all, all, all pieces of it, and make it ready to get the wires to go in there. But the wires aren't gonna go in just bare, because they'll rub against the sides, insects will get in here. Well, insects always get in here. I can't seem to stop those and the spiders. But water can get in there, all sorts of other stuff. We need something to protect the wires and make this work a lot better. We're gonna use something called a cord grip. Now, this is a cord grip. Okay, let me pull it out of the bag. And if you can't notice, you're wondering what's wrong with the bag and all these things. Uh, one of my cats absolutely adores chewing on Ziploc bags. I leave a Ziploc bag out, he's gonna chew it up. I call him Mr. Hole Punch. There you go. So here's a cord grip. Now these ones are metal, okay? And they come apart like this. And the wire runs in through there. And when you tighten it down, it grips this, all right? And then it holds the cord well, prevents water and other stuff getting in there. Now I use metal ones when I can, when the wires are most likely gonna be exposed uh, to UV. Some of the plastics and stuff like that, when they get direct sun out here in this area, uh, it's a little harsh. I found the plastics kind of slowly degrade and come apart over time. So I like to use the metal ones when I can. You know, so these are nickel plated. They will last quite a while. They're also a little more pricey. These are about $12 a piece. Now in here, where the wire goes through, this has a specific size. It can do a specific size range of wire. So when you buy your wire, you need to find out what the outer diameter of it is and buy this so it is correct and fits your wire. Now here's other cord grips. And these ones are plastic and stuff. Now, if I've got this combiner box mounted under the panels and away and it gets enough air and cool and the sun's not gonna get on it, yeah, you can use these just fine. They work great and such. Now, both of these are for half inch holes and stuff, but you gotta match them to your wire. How thick your wire is determines what cord grips can work with your wire. And it's very important. If it's too big, it's just gonna slosh around and slide and not be any help. If it's too small, um, the insulation is not, you're gonna have a hard, hard time getting it through the insulation, it, or not at all, it's just not gonna fit. So match it up, okay? To punch these out, uh, I'll use a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. This thing, my multi-tool has both on it, so no problem. So just kinda get on there and push in, see? Do that one, do that one. That's easy, okay? Now we get our pliers. We'll grab from the inside, and they just come off. And to match up with half inch, just gotta get this other part. So you do that. There you go. Now we have half inch ones. Take the cord grip end here, undo this, little lock nut. Put through, screw it on. Here we are, and through there, out. And that's where the wire's gonna run through. Looks pretty nice, actually, doesn't it? Thanks. I like it. If these weren't so expensive, I'd use them all the time just because they're kind of spiffy looking. <laughs> now let's get the breakers connected up to the bus bar and get it ready, and we can get this sign lined up and then start putting the wires in. And then after that, we'll be done. So it just takes a little bit of time, no big issue. All right, here's my three breakers. I have a 12 amp, a 12 amp, and an eight amp. Got two different types of strings of panels to wire together here, and combine them up, get it into the charge controller, make me power. I like power. Now, you see how these kind of line up there, and this is going to go on like that. So see? All right, here's the bus bar. Okay, this square hole back here is where the output lug goes. So it goes in here and screws on from the back and goes in there. And then that's how the output goes from the breakers into the main breaker to the charge controller. Now, this is an electrical connection, so this is gonna mate to this to form a good bond. I'm gonna put some of that goop there. Yes, these are both templated. Yes, they're supposed to resist corrosion. But I'm a paranoid, paranoid crazy guy. And I'm also very, very anal. And Rob Painless, if you're watching this, you might be going, Reed, dude, you are kind of paranoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I say, I like my stuff to last, you know, 50 years or longer. That's just me. 
So, you know, a lot of mating stuff when it's outside. Yep, I'm using the antioxidant compound. We only need just a little bit. Okay, so I've got this mounted here. I'm going to tighten this down with this to torque screwdriver. We're going to put 30 inch pounds on this connector, make certain it's on there correctly. And yes, I am also very anal on the torque settings of my breakers, my wires, and all my connections. I want them at the right torque specifications because I don't want to come and loose. And the other thing is if it's too tight, well, the wire becomes damaged. It also can become brittle and break off. It's too loose, arcing. And then you have, you know, fire, fire bad, no fire. So I highly, highly recommend you use a torque screwdriver or a torque wrench when making your electrical connections. And for everyone out there that says, oh, you don't need to do that. Trust me, larger gauge wires, especially the big battery ones we're going to be messing with. It is utterly and completely vital. They are torqued to specifications. If they're not, that connection will come apart and you will have a fire. Yes, possible death. It's bad. In fact, Rob, if you're watching this video, leave a comment. Tell people, is torquing your actual wires important? Should we actually do the proper torque specifications and give a darn about it? Or am I just a crazy person? Let us know. Curious minds want to, want to know. And then for all of you that don't know, Rob Painless, you can go check out his channel. It'll be up here. He is an electrician. He did it for years and years and years. I'm on the engineer side, but I also know the trade. So there you go. Anyways, let's get this tightened up right. And with the big click, it's there. And it's on there quite well. And I got a little goop squeezed out of the sides. We'll clean that up, move on to the next piece, getting the breaker set up. And same thing. <laughs> so here's the individual breaker. Now on the side, all breakers have labels saying, use this wire, here's how much torque you need on it. It's like that. Also with the instructions inside here, they list the tor spe torque specifications for what goes into what, how big the wire is and how much you put on there for torque. Yes, it's critical. It really is people. I know tons of people out there are going to say, eh, 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 eh. you don't really need to do that. It's just something, blah, blah, blah. Trust me. I have seen enough wires and connections fail over my time to know how important proper torquing is. Yes. And I'm torquing some people right now as I'm griping at them for this. <laughs> so please torque your connections. Now in this case, for what we're going to use and put this on here, we are going to use 35 inch pounds. So we'll get this thing set up for 35 inch pounds. Now this is actually a really cool little torque screwdriver. Uh, I found it on Amazon and it's actually for gunsmithing is what they marketed it to. And since I also do gunsmithing, I was really happy to see it. And I was also happy to know that it was a decent price. And so I happily gave them my money to get this. So, cause trying to do like a screwdriver type thing with a torque wrench, doable, but ridiculous. This really good. So if you want this, check the description. Like I said, all the stuff that we're doing here is in the description. So check out the description. They're useful. Descriptions are helpful. That's why they're descriptive. Okay. So enough with the bad jokes. <laughs> Time to tighten some wires and breakers. Okay. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put a little goop on these guys. Yes, more insurance. I'm big on insurance. There we go, goop. Now let's grab a breaker. And I'm looking at this going, I have a small oops. I gotta correct it. Uh, the lug's on the upside down. So uh, if I mounted this and put it in there, I wouldn't be tightening any wires. So let's flip that around. Good thing to carefully examine what you're doing now before you go later. <laughs> Trust me, it's, it's bad. <laughs> All right, I have corrected my mistake, right? Now I can start with the breakers. 
Now, on the breakers, one of the things I always tell people to be careful on is these side plastic here on this is pretty thin. So we want to make certain we hold them tightly as we're getting them connected. Okay, I've got my thing corrected so I can connect the breakers. Now they have this side plastic here around the casing where this goes in, okay? Now that plastic is very thin. So I always tell people to very tightly hold the breakers as we're crimping them. I mean, not crimping, screwing it down. Okay, so we get one in the position we want. Get our torque wrench or our torque screwdriver. We're going to snug it up to get everything lined up. And sometimes it feels like you need 20 hands to do this. And I wish I had a new back right now because it's just killing me. My back has been murdering me lately. It's annoying as that is. All right, we got everything snugged up. Looks good. All right, I'm gonna grip it real tight on the sides here. Okay, and then we're gonna twist till the torque wrench goes click. Okay, click, and torque screwdriver, not wrench. <laughs> I'm going to be making that mistake constantly, so if it drives you nuts, sorry. I wish my dry jokes were driving you nuts instead. All right, three clicks. Now there's a caveat on this. With these breakers, you have to wait an hour and then torque it again. And yes, they do significantly loosen, especially on wire. So always re-torque these after an hour and then you're good. But it's attached to the bus bar, it's in there. Yay, progress. So pull these clips back, okay. And we can put it in here. Top first, line it up. Now, to know where you're in the right spot, take the plastic cover, and we're gonna pop off these extra two, because I'm using three breakers in this three breaker panel. There we go, see? Obviously not done yet, we gotta run wire and stuff in there, but we got a good fit. Now let's take the ends of the wire, push it through these uh, holes, and get it run into the right spots. All right, I've got the wires pushed through. I've got all their ends stripped off. I'm just gonna get them into the breakers, a little goop, tighten them up, and there we go. I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. Uh, this takes a little bit of effort, and I'm gonna be grabbing it from down below. <laughs>
we've got our wiring done. Everything goes into the breakers. Reds to the breakers. White to the negative bus bar over here. And I'm one of those guys that likes my wiring very neat and tidy. You can tell what's going where very easily. It's not horribly crowded. It's nice and neat. And it really, really helps on big stuff. Now there's no grounding and stuff like that connected right now because that happens later when we wire it up to the solar panels and everything else. So for now, this is done. We just gotta put the covers on it and we're set, just like the beginning one. Well, I gotta wait an hour and torque these down one last time. But then it'll all be set and ready to be hooked up and put into use. So there you go, how to wire up a combiner box. Hope this is helpful. Hope you liked it. Take care everyone. This is Reed, out for now.